Okay, so this is the final example on development. So shown here are two figures. This is the front view of a cone and this curve over here is the intersection between the cone and a rectangular prism. So I have drawn this curve, I have kind of transferred this curve from an example. Uh, this curve is slightly similar to the previous example, but in the previous example we had taken a diamond prism as opposed to a rectangular prism. This, this uh, curve corresponds to that from rectangular prism and of course I have also taken the top view. I have not transferred these intersection points over there for a reason, but uh, this, this example is on development. So, you should realize very well that uh, a conical surface is developable. And it so turns out that if you cut uh, this conical surface and kind of uh, flap it open, it would lie nicely on a piece of paper, It'd lie nicely on a plane, which is what we are trying to do in this example. And uh, we would also try to capture this intersection curve, this curve of intersection on that developed conical surface. Now, think about sheet metal work this is precisely what they do. So, what they do is they would actually develop uh, the conical surface they would transfer this intersection loop on that then they would kind of uh, mold that surface into a cone and when they do that they would get the intersection curve just like that and uh, you know uh, you can actually place the rectangular prism, uh, rectangular prism um, over that or inside that or within that you know little void that is left. So, we will try to do that primarily you know prepare for sheet metal work. Okay, so, enough of talking let us get down to business. So, to develop a conical surface of course, uh, this would be you know if you if you kind of cut this cone and if you flip it open flap it open on the plane. Uh, you know you this this conical surface is going to open out as a sector and the radius of that sector is going to be this much you know the slant length of a cone. So, what I will do is I will first try to capture that I have that pretty much I will probably take any convenient center and uh, perhaps somewhere over here and then draw a little sector. Maybe I will start from here and you know just draw a little sector. Yeah, pretty much like that. Now, what I also have is uh, I say that all right, let this apex of the cone be you know cut by a horizontal plane uh, so that we see a little void here. So, let me also draw that corresponding arc it's probably going to be of this radius and let me draw this right here. Just about there and let me make a line to start with. So, I am not going to be labeling as of now, but perhaps later I will do that. Okay, so, this is my start line for example. Now, one of the problems that I need to address is I need to you know capture this void as a single loop within that developed surface. Okay. Now, if you look at for example, i j segment i j here and segment i j there and if you go back to your theory you would observe that this segment is 
parallel to a hinge line. So, I do not have a hinge line here. So, maybe I will just show that it is going to be parallel to this. Well, perhaps I should be using my grafter. Switch to my 2 edge pencil, just kind of you know draw a little horizontal line here, perhaps a little darker, and then use my set square friend. All right, so this is my hinge line, but the point I was trying to make was that this segment is parallel to the hinge line and therefore, this straight line is going to be in true length. So, if I assume this arc to be of you know approximately the same length as this line segment j k or i j for that matter or any other line segment for that matter, because for all these line segments the corresponding projections they are all parallel to the hinge line. So, perhaps what I would do is I would take this as or this to approximately represent the length of this arc and with this length I will start cutting down this larger arc. So, if I start from j for example, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, well 10, 11, 12. So, perhaps 12 of these arcs or perhaps one more. Let me you know, just go ahead and keep cutting and maybe I will count later. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, perhaps one more, 14. So, of course, when you open up this conical surface it would not be reaching to a 180 degree thing, but it will be little smaller than that. And assuming that this is my starting surface. Now, if I go back to my example and perhaps give you a little peek on the top view of this here, you will see that sectors C O D and D O E they do not contain any part of the intersection. So, C O D D O E so there is no intersection or there is no part of intersection curve in there. So, perhaps what I will do is I will start you know nomenclating or naming these points from say C, okay, because that would allow me to have my intersection curve somewhere over here, and then I'll go cyclically. So let me start with C, and then D, E, F, G, H, I. J K L over here back to A B C D. Well, I do not think I would need D. So, perhaps I will stop down till here C to C. and 
I would erase the rest of this bigger arc as well as the small arc. I will try to make sure that I do not leave any trace of the bigger arc as well as the smaller arc. Okay. Having done that, and of course, this is my apex point O or apex point, howsoever it is pronounced. And from this point, I will start joining you know the points on the arc. I should be using my 2 H pencil for that because these are construction lines. I will omit while. slowly, but steadily. I am not sure if you are realizing that my stable my, my my table is unstable or slightly unstable rhymes pretty well now nah? my table my table is unstable or my table is not so stable it's a bit shaky but i don't think i should be complaining Okay. Now I have to take off. I have to take care of uh, some special leaders or generators O Q O P O M and O N. So maybe let me draw O M because my intersection points also lie on these generators or these lines. Okay. Let me try to locate them. So, P is in between G and H and of course, G P I can assume it to be in true length because G P over here is horizontal and I will assume that P and Q they are lying on the same horizontal, they should be lying on the same horizontal. So, I measure this arc and from G towards H, okay, it is going to be very close to H from G towards H. I make a cut and call this P. Okay, and likewise from A towards L, A towards L, I make another cut of the same radius and call this Q, P and Q with the center. And let me also take care of M and N, M and N. So, from I, I can measure this arc length, from K, I can measure this arc length. They should once again be the same, M and N, they should be lying on the same horizontal. Maybe I can just verify this quickly, looks like they do. And then I measure the arc length from Q this arc length. So, it is going from 
well maybe I should be measuring it from L it's even better. So, from L towards k from L which is here towards k and this is my point n let me name it and on the left side from h towards m let me make sure that I have this length right just about from h towards i ok. From h towards i my point m should be here. Let me name this point as m and then join O 2 m and O 2 n first n and then m. Now, having all the generators on the developed conical surface, well I have a scar on my sheet, I am not sure if you notice it, probably you do not. Nevertheless, so having these generators on my developed surface, it is time for me to transfer these intersection points on the respective lines. Okay. Now, notice that all these intersection points are lying on the respective generators in the front view. Now, if I want to get the true length, okay, if you notice this would be the true length, this would be the projection of that length, projection of that length, projection of this length, projection of this length and so on and so forth. So, to get the true lengths of these intersection points from O, I would need to project all of these intersection points onto this line. So, let me call this line as a true length line, maybe shift align my drafter. I, I do not think I will be needing my drafter uh, very often in this example. So, perhaps I can you know mention this over here that this is my true length line and then I align my drafter with the horizontal and let it rest. I will have to get up and you know just type true length line should have come out all right and I will raise the rest of this make sure I wipe the residue from the sheet. Well, I was wrong when I said that I will not be using the drafter. This is the critical part. I just want to make sure that I have the longer ruler aligned with the horizontal. The critical part is to transfer all these intersection points onto the true length. So, point number 1, point number 2, point number 3 four already lies on the slant length of the cone, point number 5, 6, 7, 8 also lies in the cone, 9, 10, 11 and
Okay. Now very carefully I am going to be measuring these lengths from O and then transferring them back onto the respective generators or selected lines. I am going to be using my compass for that. Okay, first is O 1. Right there, O 1 lies on A So, this is where my intersection point 1 is. Let me label it. Just double checking if I have everything all set because I do not want any part of my intersection loop to be lying away over here. Even if it does, it does not really matter, I can always you know extend this part of the cone then erase the other part. Seems all right I mean well nevertheless you know what is C O B going to be having a part of the intersection curve back to my top view C O B looks like it will be having quite a bit of this loop perhaps it is a nice idea for me to extend this, I will take care of that later. Okay, so, point 1 lies on O A, point 2 it lies on C and K, okay, so C there, there and K would be here. So, this is intersection point number 2. All right. So, point number 3, extend this further. Now, point 3 lies on It looks like point 3 lies in Q. Very close to BL. So, this is where point 3 would lie. L and Q are quite close to each other. And B and L, well, let us see, B L Q. Mark an arc over here. So, this is where my point 3 would be, would be on P as well. Well, if I take a look at this, 3 should be lying on L and H if I am looking at the top view. So, L and H. So, L is here h would be here. I am not sure if I am doing this right, but well we will come back to that later. So, let me not label 3 for now. 4, 4 definitely lies on a and g. this that is what I am sure of. Point number 5 lies on B and F yeah number 5 lies on B and F ok B is here F is here. that is intersection point number 5. 6 lies on special leaders N 
and m. Okay, first let me get the length. Here, that lies on m, which is there, and n, which is here. Number six. Number seven, where does that lie? Point number seven is here. Looks like it lies on B and F again. B and F. Okay, so let me measure seven, the true length of that here. Okay, and it lies on B and F. So F is here and B is there. Let me call this seven. Seven. Number eight again lies on A and G. Remember, I still have to come back for the intersection point number 3, because I was not sure where it would lie. Okay. It should not be very difficult for me to figure it out. Nevertheless, number 9, if you look at the previous example, or even if you do not want to, that is fine, but 9 lies on Q, the special leader and P. So, I have my q here, I have my p here. So, 9 would lie here somewhere and here somewhere. Okay, so, that is on q and p. So, this is number 9. Let me indent this point a little bit. So, that I do not confuse between these two leaders, these two leaders. Number 10 that lies on B and F again, little shorter in length. This is 10. There is a possibility that I may have to extend my developed surface on this side. There is a possibility, but I am not really sure at this time. 11, it lies on C and K. Now, C is just about there, just about there. 11. True length is right there, lies on C and K. The two C's and K. Let me name this as 11, 11, and 11 here. Okay. And number 12, of course, is on D and J. So, J is here, T is here. That would be smaller in size of course. On J and T. This is 12. and this is 12. 
Now, if I have my intersection points here, it is not going to be possible for me to get the entire loop within this region. So, I will probably have to do something either I need to grow my sectors along this direction or a simpler thing that I can do would be to erase this and renumber this. So, that I get this entire loop within here somewhere perhaps that would be better I have already transferred these distances. So, that should not be a problem. Okay, so, I will just go ahead and erase this and then rename this. just want to make sure that I erase these nicely. It is quite possible that I need to locate my special leaders again that should not be a problem. Now, before I rename these vertices, let me take a look at the top view of this figure. And notice that it is this sector C O D and D O E that does not contain any part of the intersection curve. So, is it safe for me to start with D or perhaps is it safe for me to start with E? If I start with D and go well it does not matter. So, if I start with D let us say from here. Okay, and then go anti clockwise, I probably would be missing, I probably would be fine over here and then I will probably expect my loop to be on the left hand side as I traverse anti clockwise. So, maybe it is better if I start from D here and then of course, over here I will be back to D. Okay. So, if I start with D from here, then this would be E, this is F, this is G, this is H, I, J, this point over here would be K, L, there and then A. this is B, this is C and this part is D. No problem there. Well, let me adjust this radius, draw the sector nicely. this part that got erased. Okay. And you know I will do a little thing which I think it is smart, but later on it will be confusing. So, what I will do is I will make you know all these marks over here. So, this is for the intersection point 1, point 2, well I have not yet marked 3, but I will start with 4. to 
5. This is not very difficult at this time. But when I am going to be marking the final intersection points, there are chances that I might make mistakes. Number 6. Number 7. Remember that I do not need to do this. I am just doing this to make my life a little more complicated. Number 8. Ten will be slightly smaller. Eleven still smaller. Finally, 12. Too many arcs. Nevertheless, first things first, let me try to locate M and N again. So, if I measure from I, just about there. So, from I towards P or from I towards H, from I towards H, this is where I am going to be getting M. name this point and then from k towards l same radius k towards l yeah this is n let me join m and n to o on this a little bit even though I know that I do not need this generator anymore. And then how about P and Q? So, from A to Q that is the longer arc length easier for me to measure A to Q towards L A to Q towards L. So, that is my Q. And from G to H, from G to H, that should be my P. Okay. Join my new Q to zero or O. Should be using a different pencil. And my new P to a 
looks like I am ready to mark my intersection points. Okay, point number 1. Now, for that let me use the top view, easier for me to work with that. Point number 1 lies on J, where is my J? Okay. So, this is the arc for 1, this is the point that I guess I will be getting. Number 2 lies on I and K. So, I is here, K is here perhaps. So, that is number 2 that I get. Number 3 is on L and H perhaps. On L, L is there, well I do not have the radius for that. Or maybe I do, not sure. That is number 3. That is the radius that I have. All right, so three would lie on H and L. That is my L. So, it is probably going to be lying here. Let me name this arc as 3 over here and H is going to be lying here. And from here on, I guess I will be okay. So, 4 lies on A and G, 4 is this arc lies on A and lies in G there, 5 lies on perhaps B and L, I will probably have to pull it up back, 5 lies on B and F on B and F does not lie on L. Okay, so, 5 lies over here and over here. Number 6 lies on M and N. That is interesting. M should be between H and I, from H towards I, from H towards I, N should be from let us say K towards L, from K towards L. So, looks like M and N are ok, but should the intersection points be here? Well, let us let us not worry about 6 for the moment. For the moment. 7 lies on B and F again, 7 lies on B, that is for 7 and F. There I am. Eight on A and G, this is equal for 8, yeah. that lies on A right there and G should be here. 
looks like I am getting a loop, but I am still to decide on 6. 9 lies on special leaders P and Q. So, this is the arc for 9, it is to be lying here on Q and on P. 10 lies on B and F once again. Pull this up, lies on well, lies on L and H. Would have been a nice idea for me to you know have this in section over here as well, but let me take this as a reference. So, B lies on H and L 10, yeah, section point number 10. So, this is L and this would be H, H would be here, right. So far, so good. 11 lies on I and K. This is the arc for 11, that is K and that is I. and 12 has to lie on J. So, the arc for 12 lies on J. Once again, tracing from J going all the way, coming back, going all the way and you know coming back. So, 8 point number 8 is somewhere over here. 8 is on yeah A and G. So, should be yeah and yeah. Okay, what I will do is I will take a little break for 5 minutes and then come back and try to locate the point that I have not been able to locate so far. So, point number 6 looks like I may have missed something. See you in a while. Okay, so, while I was taking a break, I was trying to figure where did I make a mistake, because I was not able to get the 6th intersection point. And if I look at the top view that I have, and if I look at the top view that is there, I immediately realized what my mistake was, what my folly was. And the folly was that, if you look at my specially the point M here, okay, it should be up there, not here. Likewise, n should be up there and not here. So, if you follow the previous example, you would be able to realize it better. That was where my mistake was and of course, these generators are therefore, not correct. So, that is what I would do. I would make that correction right now. So, my n is here in between B and C and my M is here in between E and F. Having said that, well let me call this N prime, I do not want to erase anything further. Let me call this M prime. Okay, so, let me join M prime with O with the 2 H and N prime with O with the 2 H. All right. So, M prime is now lying between E and F. If I start from E, it is more towards F. Let me capture this arc. Of course, if I look at this corresponding projection is horizontal and it is parallel to the hinge line. Likewise, this is horizontal and parallel to the hinge line. Therefore, this would be true length. You know about that from the theory. So, 
center as E and towards F. I am going to be drawing this arc. Let me call this M prime and uh, to locate N prime center from center as B, where is my point B and towards C. Yeah. So, center as B and towards C, this is my N prime. Okay, so, having located these two new leaders, I am going to join them using a 2 H. I am going to join M prime to O, which is instead, and now N prime to O. then becomes easier for me to locate the intersection point 6, which I was unable to locate last time. So, the arc for the intersection point 6 is here and this is where it is going to be lying. Okay, on M prime and <coughs> on N prime it is going to be lying here. No, that is the arc for 7. So, this would be the arc for 6. So, I have to be very, very careful, especially when I am not labeling these points. So, this is in section point number 6, and here this would be the intersection point 6 right there. Now, that I have made so many mistakes in this lab perfectly all right. One should rather invite mistakes, that is how you learn. What I would do is I would kind of circle these intersection points, just to give you an idea as to how they look. So, number 1 is here, maybe I will just use a smaller circle. Number 2 is here. and so it is here. Number 3 is perhaps here, number 3 is on L and B, B, L and possibly F is it or anyhow. So, number 3 is yeah H, that is where it is H. So, that is number 3. Got to be extra careful, because if I get it wrong, then I will have to erase the entire thing. Perhaps I need, I would then need to do this lab all over again. Number 4 is on A and G, that is on A and G. So, it is okay here and G, G will be here somewhere. Yeah. Five is on special leaders P and Q. Special, I do not know why I keep saying them leaders, why I keep calling them leaders, they are generators. So, five is on P and Q, is it or it is on B and L, looks like it is on B and L, getting my toffee back, B and F rather, B and F. So, this is my fifth intersection point, B and F should be here somewhere. My sixth intersection point is on N prime and M prime. This is my sixth. 
hope I am getting it right. And here M prime. Okay. All right, my seventh is on B and F is it? Seventh on B and F looks like it's my seventh. That's my seventh there. Eighth is on A and G. Okay, so my eighth intersection point is on A and G there and there. Let me mark them. And this one right there. My ninth is on special P and Q. So, I got my ninth here on Q and this is P, ninth on P. Okay. Tenth is on B and F possibly or perhaps it is on H and L. Well, let me get back to the top view. Tenth would be on L and H. Okay. <coughs> so my tenth on L and on H. Okay, two more. 11th is on C K and E I. So, looks like I have got K and I here. Now, which one is my 11th and which one is my 12th? So, looks like this is my 11th. All right. So, these, these, these two points are ok, but maybe I did not mark number 12 correctly. So, these points are ok. 11th is on K and I. and my twelfth is going to be on J and it has to be here. To verify, let me take the true length for twelfth. It is my twelfth, my true length. Going back over there, well, Here is pretty much going back over there, and this is my arc for the twelfth. So this should be my intersection point here on J. So I'll just mark it there. So having done that, now I am going to be very very careful in sketching that loop out. I'll have to get up, go to the other side of the sheet and using freehand sketch it nicely. So, I will start with J, okay, this is point number 1.
well let me see how it goes somewhere like that perhaps and the slope over here would be 0 and then this is point number 5 I believe or this is point number 6. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then 7, 2, 8, 2, 9 and then this would be my 10th, 11th and 12th. So, this is how the intersection loop is going to be. Now, let me darken this using the edge pencil and this time I am going to be quite careful. doing this free hand ideally I should have used French curves once again here the slope is going to be 0 so this is how this loop would probably look like. Okay, bottom line, there are chances of a lot of mistakes that one can make. One needs to be a little careful. Even if one is careful, even then there are chances that you might still make a lot of mistakes. Do not worry about that. Keep making mistakes. Keep verifying them. Keep learning from them but try to ensure that once you learn from them, you do not make more mistakes from then on.